Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us today for our lunchtime webinar. This is going to be a really fun one that is so important, especially this time of year where we are. I am in zone seven in Oklahoma City, and I will tell you, I was out there in the garden this morning actually battling some cabbage worms. So they are definitely out there in force. Oh, we even saw squash bug today too. So yeah, there's definitely lots of pests to be battling right now. And there are lots of really great ways to go about organically, both um, trying to repel them and prevent them from happening. And also once you see an issue, how to go about just helping prevent it. So thank you everybody for joining us today. And we're going to have lots of fun talking all about pests. I would love everybody to hop into the comments and Tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me where you where you guys are gardening. If you guys are having any pest issues, what pests are you guys seeing in your garden? I would love to see them. So for those of you that did sign up and put some questions down, I did go through those questions and I tried to incorporate as many of them as I could into this PowerPoint that I'm going to be going over. And because there were so many different pests that you guys were dealing with all throughout the country. And that's definitely definitely normal. <laughs> so I hope I will be answering most everybody's questions. But if I don't, or if you guys have a question that comes up while I'm talking, please feel free to pop them into the chat and we will either answer them as we're going through or at the end, we'll try and answer as many as we can before we're all up. And if I don't answer them during this time, don't worry, I'll come back later and answer them too. Okay, so let's go ahead and put up, there we go, combating garden pests. Let's do it. So first of all, um, just to introduce myself, I don't think I even said who I was. Uh, my name is Carrie. My husband, Dale, and I are the creators of the From Seed to Spoon Garden app, um, which helps walk you through growing over 100 different fruits, vegetables, and herbs, and it'll help you with all the pests as well, too. So it'll help, um, first of all, help you identify, too, by showing you some pictures of the different pests. Um, but it'll show different, um, different pests, different organic methods. Um, and it'll also have links for um, different products and things throughout um, Park Seed, where you can go through and help with different things. So it'll show you companion planting and all of that. So it's just super helpful. And I want to make sure that I said who I was and told you guys to make sure you download that because it will help you with all of these pests as well. And make sure you guys stay tuned because at the very end, we're going to be doing a drawing from everybody who has participated here today live with us. And we're going to be doing a one-year free premium app subscription. So it'll be super exciting. You'll be able to log unlimited amount of plants and also ask Growbot as many questions as you want. So many things. So for one whole year, so make sure that you guys stick around to the end. You will definitely want to be entered to win. First of all, I did want to touch a little bit on some of your friends that are going to be in the garden with you. And a lot of them are, you know, going to be like the bees and butterflies. I know all of you guys know that those are great friends to have in the garden. But some things people don't necessarily realize are friends, might be a little scary looking. Um, so things like spiders, they are super beneficial. And I'm going to talk a little bit about spiders throughout um, because there are a couple different pests in particular that spiders can really help with. And they'll make your life a lot easier out in the garden because they go through and they can actually hunt some of the garden pests that you're dealing with. So they will help you protect your food, which is awesome. And there's also certain like parasitic wasps that can go through and help you too. And I know I say wasp and people typically freak out because I, I mean, if you're anything like me, whenever I first started gardening, I was terrified of all of it. Like the spiders, the the wasps, the snakes, like all of that. I was like, nope, nope. But once you realize how beneficial they are out in the garden, 
it'll really change your mind quickly. And I've never had an issue with any wasps attacking me. I know everybody's always terrified that they're going to attack them, but I've never had an issue. And we see countless wasps out in the garden, like all the time. And they are our friends. They go through, they help battle um, lots of different pests. I will show you in particular um, one thing that they really help with, with tomato hornworms. Um, but there's lots of different ways that wasps can go about helping you too. And also just one thing I wanted to show you as well is the ladybug and the ladybug larva. So that picture on the very left of the screen is a picture of ladybug larva. And it is a little bit weird looking. So the first time we saw that, we were like, oh, what in the world is that? Because it looks so weird and foreign. Like it did not look like a ladybug at all to me. So we had to like look it up and be like, is this a good friend? Is this a good, bad? What do we do? Um, so I know a lot of people have killed these because they think it's something that's bad in their garden. So I wanted to make sure I just showed a picture of that as well, just because it is something is so beneficial. Ladybugs are amazing. They will eat countless amounts of aphids in their lifetime and they can really help you, you know, battle lots of different insects. So ladybugs are great to have around. So if you see that ladybug larva, make sure that you keep that around. Okay, so cabbage worms. I wanted to jump right in with what I was battling this morning. <laughs> so this morning I walked out to our garden and I, I was looking at our cabbage plant and it, I actually have a picture of our cabbage plant right there. That leaf right there was our, our, our little cabbage plant. It had a bunch of these little holes in it and I was like, oh no. So I went through, saw a bunch of holes and then I saw some little, little like dribbles of the cap or the, uh, caterpillar poop. And I was like, I know that there's a cabbage or cabbage worm on here somewhere. So I started looking on the undersides of leaves and sure enough, I found four of them. They look just like that. They're just little tiny. Um, I guess not tiny, but I mean, about like that big, um, little green worms and they, they can just devour a plant and they leave lots of holes in your leaves and it can really affect it. So it's really important to be checking undersides of leaves, especially if you see those little holes. Um, so what I did for me, I just went through and handpicked um, these ones since there was only four and I did only noticed them on one plant. So they're easy enough just to handpick. I mean, they're just like a little worm, so it's nothing too scary. <laughs> And I just handpicked them. And well, for me, I just gave them to our chickens because our chickens were right there and they, they're always excited to get a treat. But what I typically do is um, I'll, I'll carry around like a bucket of soapy water. And anytime I see a pest like this, I just pop them in into the buckets. So that way I can, um, you know, just go through and it makes it so they don't crawl out and, It'll keep them from flying away too. Not worms, but any sort of pest that you're pulling. So I keep lots of soapy, soapy water buckets around. Um, other things that you can do to help with the cabbage worms are going to be, of course, companion planting. Again, this is going to be for um, prevention mainly. So any way you can do to prevent them. So a lot of common ones for this and a lot of common ones for a lot of these insects are gonna be like the strong smelling ones. So this one's gonna be like the mint, the onions, garlic, rosemary, those ones. And then celery in particular for cabbage worms is one that they just do not like. So I thought that one was really interesting. And then nasturtium actually works as almost like a trap for them because they, um, they will go to that instead of your brassicas. So it's a really good way to protect your brassica plants, but also you'll have a sacrificial nasturtium plant for them. Um, some other things you can do to prevent is by having any sort of floating row covers. And we've built our own in the past with these um, PVC dome hoop houses that we have. And in the summer, we can put like some insect netting over top of it, super simple to build. Um, I should have put, popped a link to that, but um, if they can find it, I'll have I'll have them post a, a link to that video for the, how to build that PVC dome hoop house that with the insect netting. 
Um, but also there's also ones that you can buy too. Park Seed has lots of options for the insect netting and the pop-up hoop houses just to protect like um, on a smaller scale. Like if you have a small plant that you want to protect or a garden in particular that you want to protect from insects, there's really good options that you can purchase for those. And then other things that you can do for these are going to be things like um, BTK. Um, this is a caterpillar spray. So this is a natural occurring soil bacteria that go through and um, <clears throat> you just spray, spray the leaves, spray the problem sides, and then um, your caterpillars will no longer survive. So that's something that can help you as well. Um, neem oil has been shown to help as well, too. Um, a word of caution on neem oil, though, if you are in the heat of the summer, you want to make sure that you don't use it if your temperatures are above around like 90 degrees or so, just because it can suffocate your plants if it gets too hot. So you want to make sure that you're spraying this either in the evening time, whenever the temperatures are not super warm, or if you are in a milder climate, it's a good option for you as well. And then, of course, there's going to be beneficials like the spiders and the wasps that we talked about earlier. I know nobody likes them, but they can help with cabbage worms and cabbage moths. Um, so they can be really beneficial and help quite a bit. So those ones are ones that you definitely want to make sure you keep around because they can really help. Okay, so next I wanted to talk about this is something that everybody always, always is terrified of. And this is the tomato hornworm. It is absolutely huge. He is like, I mean, yeah, as you can see there, it is a huge, huge caterpillar. And on the very end, um, it has like this little pokey spot. Like it looks and it, they like look like they're going to threaten you. I mean, they don't sting you or anything, but they look like they will. Oh, they're they're fierce, fierce looking. Um, and you'd be surprised with how huge they are. They blend into the plant so easily. So a lot of the times like you will be amazed by how long they can stay on a tomato plant or a pepper plant without you even realizing. <laughs> and they can do damage so fast. Um, you can be out there one day and your tomato plant looks amazing. And then the next you can look and your tomato plant is half gone with all of the foliage gone. So they can be really devastating. So biggest things for them, you want to make sure to try and prevent first, if you can. And prevention is key for, with. I, I always do companion planting, especially for my tomatoes. And my favorite companion plants for tomatoes are going to be the marigolds, the calendula, the nasturtium, basil, dill, those ones right there are always going to be my favorite ones because they can really help with lots of different pests, but in particular, the tomato hornworm too, really helps to disguise that tomato plant and hide it a little bit. So that's one that I always try and make sure that I'm companion planting with whenever I'm planting out my tomatoes. And I do want to mention as well, if you see the tomato hornworm with the white little eggs on it as well in your garden, make sure you leave those be because as scary and menacing as it looks with the white eggs on it, it's actually good because that is where your friend, the wasp came in, your wasp came in and laid the eggs on the caterpillar. And it sounds horrible, but it's actually killing the caterpillar and it's actually hatching out new wasps to help you in the garden. So you are doing a good thing by letting it say it's not going to be living much longer if it has those white little eggs in it. So wasps, again, can be your best friend, especially for tomato hornworms. And then BTK, again, is going to be something that's really great for caterpillars. Um, the um, naturally occurring soil bacteria can really help and then diatomaceous earth has been shown to help as well sometimes. Um, so just a few other like little things that you can do organically to help. And 
Then we'll go to the next one, the next slide. We have squash bugs. So squash bugs are definitely a nemesis of ours. It is probably one of our least favorite pests that are out there. And for a good reason, because, well, first of all, growing zucchini is probably one of my very favorite things to do. And I absolutely love, love squash bugs. So, or squash bugs, <laughs> zucchini and squash bugs make it, oh, they make it, they make it difficult sometimes. So the first year that we grew zucchini, we got so many zucchinis from it and so many squash. It was, it was so much squash. It was amazing. And then the next year, the squash bugs found us. So we had to go through and battle them. And I know earlier I was talking a little bit about walking around with the buckets of soapy water. You'll definitely want that for squash bugs. So with the adults, I mean, there's not too much you can do. So you want to make sure that you, if you see any adult squash bugs, you are hand picking them like immediately um, because they can be, they can do so much. And then um, I also put pictures up here too. So the little picture up in the right corner is the squash bug eggs. So if you see this on the, this will be on the underside of your squash leaves. So if you see that, you definitely want to make sure you get rid of them. And an easy way to do that is if you just take like a lint roller and roll that over the eggs, it'll take it or just take some tape um, and, and get them off that way. Um, there's lots of ways to get them off, but just you want to make sure that you remove those. And then also down in the middle section right here, I have a picture of just hatched squash bugs. So these you can kind of use the lint roller and tape method as well because they're all kind of in that one little area again but you want to make sure you get rid of them as soon as possible because they will spread and become adults in no time um and whenever they're smaller about this age you can use things like neem oil and and things like that but once they get to be the adults nothing really helps with them besides hand picking or having like natural predators. So the praying mantis can really help in this case. Love, love those guys. They can come in and really help to get rid of the squash bugs as well. But again, the biggest key is going to be just prevention again. So a big thing again that I do is companion planting. So I make sure I always am planting like marigolds, nasturtiums, like things with a really strong scent to it or something that's going to bring in a lot of beneficials. So things like, um, the, like the dill plants will help to bring in lots of beneficials and lots of things like that. Um, I, I, I love having a lot of different companion plants in there. They can really help to, to, help bring in things like the praying mantis and also the butterflies and, and all, all, a whole bunch of things. Okay. So next we have the squash vine borer and this is something that I know a lot of people battle with as well. And we have to, this is one you will rarely ever, ever see the, um, what lays the eggs, which is that little like moth looking thing. I mean, it almost looks like a wasp whenever it's flying around in your garden. You'll see it occasionally, maybe I, like I've seen it a few times, but for the most part, you're going to be seeing what's right above there at the top, right? that little worm, that, like that little caterpillar larva that you see up there. And that is going to be where they lay. So they lay their eggs at the base of your plant and they create this little caterpillar and this caterpillar just eats your squash plant from the inside out. So you will just go through, I mean, you'll just walk out into your garden one day and see a bunch of, or you'll just see one of your zucchini plants or squash plants or one of those plants is just really wilty looking dead. You'll want to make sure that you check the base of your plant for or something like this. 
Um, so some different things that you can do. I see Wendy, she had a great idea. So she said she has foil around the base this year and hopes it will keep them away. And that is absolutely true, Wendy. So that is something that we've definitely done in the past. Um, and as you can see in this picture right up here, um, this says there's foil at the base of the plant. So you just want to make sure that you hit that area where that moth likes to lay its eggs. So in hopes that it will prevent it from laying its eggs in that plant. So it'll help to protect it. Um, and, the, and again, something else you can do is having some sort of insect netting around or the hoop houses, some sort of protection over top of your plants um, in the beginning stages. Once they are more mature, you want to make sure and getting flowers and things like that, you want to make sure you re do remove that. So that way the pollinators can come in and, and you can have fruit. But biggest thing is just preventing there from being issues in the beginning. Um, and again, using companion plants is going to be one of your best friends um, by planting some of the strong scents, like the mint, the nasturtiums, onions, basil, like all of that's really going to help um, to repel. And then there's also radish too. Um, daikon radish has also really been shown to help with squash bugs and the squash vine borer. Um, so those are things that can really help a lot as well. And then cucumber beetles. These are ones that <clears throat> are not fun, of course. They look like a yellow ladybug, pretty much. So they are ones that, um, I mean, once you see you have a problem, it's, it's, I feel like these are probably one of the easier ones to battle rather than the squash bugs and the squash vine borers. Uh, those ones I freak out about. But the cucumber beetles, if I see cucumber beetles, I'm just like, oh, I'll just go out there and pop a yellow sticky trap out. Um, and it's really not a huge deal. But these, I mean, these guys, I mean, the biggest deal, you do want to make sure you handle them because they can spread uh, diseases and viruses. Um, you want to make sure that you protect your plants because they can cause your plants to die. So I always, whenever I see them, um, I pop up a yellow sticky trap and they park seed cells, yellow sticky traps. They have them in um, small and large. They have a couple different sizes. They're super simple. You just pop them up on the trellis that your cucumber plant is on, or you can put like a little stake in the ground, something along those lines. And you can just, um, they just have a little sticky side that you remove and then they'll land on that and get caught and no more cucumber beetle. So it's super helpful. I love the yellow sticky traps. They're great. And then we've also made our own um, do-it-yourself um, cucumber beetle trap before too. And that's what this picture is up here in the um, top right corner. That's, a, that's one of our do-it-yourself traps that we've done. And pretty much all we did was just do a stick there with some yellow solo cups that are, are like attached to it meant to mimic those flowers. And then we did some um, tangle foot sticky stuff. You put it all on the inside and then put some essential oil on the inside and it just attracts them to it and then they get stuck on it. So it's just another version of those yellow sticky traps. So if you want to go that route as well, we have videos all about making that um, too. So um, it's super simple to do. And then um, again, prevention is something that you can do too for the cucumber beetles, of course, covering them with any sort of insect netting or pop-up um, covers are gonna be great. And then um, companion plants, of course, again, are gonna be great. Um, nasturtiums, marigold, anything like that. I always, I feel like I always say those, but they really are like the best companion plants. They are so good and they work for so many different, um, so many different ones. Oh, I saw what kind of essential oil. The, um, the essential oil I used was a clove. Uh, it was a clove essential oil that I did. Okay. 
So next, I wanted to talk a little bit about a little bit different ones. We have some birds now. And birds can be quite the um, quite the nemesis if you are growing things like strawberries, tomatoes, um, especially if you are growing like the really large like beefsteak tomatoes. Uh, it happens so often and <laughs> where it's like almost ready to be picked and then a bird comes in and like pecks at it. It's like, no. So we have a few different methods that we go through to prevent any sort of um, bird activity. Um, and again, a, a lot of it is going to be preventing issues. So you can, again, protect it. We have the, there's bird netting that you can actually do. And um, also what we do is put up a fake owl too. And we just move that fake owl around in our garden every couple days or so just to hopefully like keep the birds on, on, you know, not used to it. So if we move it around, they're like, Ooh, it moved. Maybe this isn't fake. So we try everything. And then we also have the, um, the motion activated sprinkler that we have in the garden. And this is for a lot of different things like birds, small mammals, things like that. And it can really help to, to like, if something comes flying in and it just suddenly starts going off, it scares them away and then they fly off. So that way it can help, like you can put it in a problem area or if you're trying to protect like your tomatoes or your strawberries and um, any of those plants, um, you can just put it somewhere close by in that proximity. And the second it senses any sort of motion over there, it'll start spraying. So I am a huge fan of motion activated sprinklers. I absolutely love them. They are super beneficial. So we definitely always have those in our garden. And then some companion planting. I mean, with birds, it's kind of like eh, hit or miss. Um, I mean, things that they don't like to eat are going to be like the garlic, mint, hot peppers, lemon, things like that. So that's more for like, I mean, I feel like chickens because um, we've definitely had a chicken problem in our past. But um, to keep like the bird, like the wild birds from flying into your garden, it is something that we've had like some success with is having white flowers. So supposedly they are scared of white flowers. I don't know why. Um, maybe somebody knows the science behind that. Cause it, I found that super interesting, but, um, yeah. So planting white flowers around can help to repel those birds away too. Okay. So next we have squirrels. Okay. So this was one that I added at the last minute. Cause I feel like a lot of people asked questions about like mice and rats and squirrels, like things like that. And I just kind of put them all together into one right here because they are super like super similar. So squirrels are ones that are going to be very similar to the birds. So they will be scared of any sort of, um, the uh, motion activated sprinkler will help. So if they are coming after your newly planted seeds, or if you find that there's a problem area, put that motion activated sprinkler out and let that scare them off. And then you can also try the fake owl approach by having that. And that can help to scare them since they are a predator of the, um, since they're a predator of the smaller mammals. So having like an owl saged around could help. And then also having cats. I mean, we have our cats patrolling in our, uh, our farm area that we have here. Um, and they love it. And they help to keep like the small, like rats, mice, things like that down. Um, but then you might find that you get a cat problem. So again, with motion activated sprinkler, that can help battle the cats as well. Um, something else we do too is do a, 
um, whenever I plant out fresh seeds, because I do notice that a lot of times like the squirrels will tend to go after like those freshly laid seeds. So I do like to put down a fresh layer of like burlap over top of it. And then I, I moisten that too. So that way um, it's keeping the seeds moist too. And then I might put like some netting um, or something like on top of that, like hardware remesh, something like that, just to keep it in place and keep it them from being able to dig or go underneath it. And that'll really help with that. So just kind of keeping those problem areas covered um, can actually really help with those little small animals that you battle in the garden. <laughs> okay, I know we had a lot of questions as well about slugs and snails. And this is something that we've battled a lot, um, especially like right now with our weather, we're getting lots of rain, which is amazing. And it's great for our garden, but the slugs and snails are loving it also. So we're having quite a, quite a bit of issues, but luckily they are pretty easy to set up. Um, yeah. So one thing we do, um, this little yellow disc that we have right here, one thing we do is we do that. We open up an old can of beer that we have in our fridge, pop some beer in there, and then it'll trap in the slugs overnight and they'll hop in there and drown. So that is definitely something that is super helpful and an easy way to go about getting rid of any sort of slugs or snails in your issue or in, in your area. Um, other things you can do is diatomaceous earth around the problem areas. Um, just put some diatomaceous earth around the plant that you're trying to protect or any sort of like crushed eggshells, things like that because they can't really cross over that. So if you're trying to protect a certain plant, just place that around the base of the plant and it'll help to protect it. And then there's also like slugs and snail baits that you can purchase and all that for, for that. Um, that also work really well. But personally, my favorite is just the tried and true beer trap. Works super well and everybody's always had success with it and works really well. Okay. Aphids is something that people are always going to find. I feel like it's something that you're just always going to have some aphids around. Um, but if you let your ladybugs go, then they will battle them for you. So we very rarely have to intervene or do anything really whenever we see aphids. Um, we have plenty of ladybugs. Um, we have actually bought ladybugs in the past too. You can purchase them, which is interesting. Um, and you just want to make sure that you do release them at night and that you have plenty of water and stuff like that around. So that way they don't go far searching for food and water. So if you release them at night when you have plenty of water and you have a good food source for them, which is those aphids, they will stick around. Um, so we've, I mean, we've had a really great population of ladybugs in our garden um, for a long time now and they do great work for us. They handle all the aphids. Um, very rarely do we ever have to do anything, but if we do do anything, pretty much what we do is just spray the undersides of the leaves where the aphids are. It's really all you need to do is just spray the undersides of the leaves, spray the um, spray them down to the ground and it works. Um, if that doesn't do the trick, there are some organic sprays that you can use as well whenever you, you can go through and spray your plants um, with these organic sprays or garlic sprays, things like that. But aphids are super simple to handle. Okay, ants. I'm pretty sure I saw questions in, in here about ants as well too. <laughs> Yes. So ants are, so they're kind of, they're good and bad. I mean, they are good to have around um, if they are not the fire ants. Um, but if they are fire ants, you definitely don't want those in your garden. Um, I know I definitely don't. Uh, so there's lots of ways to go about naturally getting rid of them. Um, we do a lot of different things. A lot of different methods. We do some of the um, 
um, a lot of the stuff up here, we have like the red peppers and the ground cinnamon, things like that can really help to get rid of um, problem areas. Um, I've even had issues like with them in the house before um, in house plants. And if I, I just sprinkle like the ground cinnamon and the or the red pepper powder in them really helps a lot. Um, now it would take a lot of that to do outside. So that, I mean, unless you're just battling like one spot, I would probably do another option. But um, something else you can do too is just boil some water inside and then take it out and then pour boiling water over where you have that, um, that colony. Um, it can really help too with, with your problem areas. Um, and then also like diatomaceous earth can help too. Um, we've also made some traps with the um, sticky, with the sticky stuff. Um, we've made like borax, um, borax traps before where you do like borax and sugar and they go in and they take that um, back to their colony and it kills them. But I know unless you're, they are the fire ants, I don't really recommend doing it because the other ants, I mean, they're not bad to have around, but if they are fire ants, you definitely want to get rid of them. So, um, let's see. Oh, I didn't read the, it was just okay. Ants. Okay. Bad. <laughs> fire ants are definitely bad. I will agree. <laughs> okay chrissy says do any beneficials get caught up on or is attracted to the sticky traps so i haven't ever had any issues with any beneficials really getting stuck on those yellow sticky traps um i mean i've seen countless amounts of the cucumber beetles i've seen um i mean lots of different pests on there. Um, I really, the only thing like beneficial that we've seen on there are flies. Um, but honestly, like I, I, I don't know, people might get mad if I say I don't really care about flies, but I, uh, I care a little bit more about like the butterflies and the bees and things like that. Like I would be sad if I saw that on there. Uh, but I have never seen a bee or a butterfly or anything or a bird or anything like that ever get stuck on them before. So we've always had really good luck with them and we use them all the time. We've used them since the beginning, pretty much that we started growing. So it's been like, it's been several years and uh, we've never had any, any issues. Okay. Do you put the clove oil directly in the soil, create a spray or spray directly on the plants? Okay. So for the cucumber beetle trap, um, what I do when I do that is I put that clove oil into the, um, the yellow solo cup and help to attract them into, yeah, right up there. So it helps to attract them into the, um, inside where there's that tangle foot glue. So it helps to attract them into there where they'll get stuck and it'll trap them in there essentially. So it's just more of an attractant to the tangle foot stuff to get them stuck. Okay, back to where we were. <laughs> okay, a few more. So um, cutworms are ones that I, I wanted to touch on because not a lot of people know about cutworms, but it's something that happens often that people don't even realize. So this will happen if you put out a like new seedlings, or if you are just growing new plants and you see them all about like this, and then you go out the next day and several of them are just missing, like gone. Um, I've seen so many posts of people saying, my, my, my little seedlings gone. What happened to it? Um, I, a lot of the time it can be attributed to cutworms so they can go through and they essentially just wrap themselves around a little baby plant and cut it. And then they, take it off and eat it. So it's not something that's great. You want to make sure that you prevent it. Um, if you do notice you have an issue, um, what I've done in the past is make these little cardboard collars. So I went through and cut up a whole bunch of um, like paper towel rolls or toilet paper rolls and put them around the um, base of the plant. Um, other things you can do are putting like toothpicks 
on sides of plants. Like there was one night where I noticed that there were several that were gone, uh, several bean plants. And I had a whole bunch of other bean plants in that same area. And I was like, I am not losing all of these beans. So I went through and I put all these toothpicks around it. And the thought of that is that if they can't get wrapped around the plant, then they can't cut it off. So that can really help too. Anything you can help to protect that base of the plant. So again, same as like with the slugs and snails. So diatomaceous earth around the base of the plant, or if you crush up the eggshells and put it around, they can't really, or they have a more difficult time getting to the base of that plant and essentially um, destroying your plant. So it can really help to protect them. And again, of course, just having a insect netting or anything like that can help to prevent it. But again, all these other methods will help as well. Okay, so earwigs are one I feel like everybody always mentions. Um, it's not necessarily something that's super bad. Um, and I mean, honestly, we don't really have a huge earwig problem here because they help to... Um, they're primarily attracted to decomposing material and they help with things like that. So they're generally not going to be super harmful unless you have a huge population of them and you don't really have anything for them to do. And they're just super attracted to all your plants. So then there's a few other things you can do. Um, and you can do things like if you lay down like fresh, uh, like newspaper or cardboard, something like that on the ground and have them moist at night. You'll come out in the morning. If you lift it up, you'll probably see a whole bunch of them right underneath it because that's what they're attracted to. So I typically go through at that point, like, and you can go through and collect them at that point if you want to. Um, personally, I don't ever really have a strong um, problem with earwigs. So I, I don't ever trap them or let them go. But if you did have an issue, I wanted to make sure I did this because I did see several questions about earwigs. Um, so that's what I would recommend is trapping them and then um, doing that. Um, but you can also do things with like vinegar, vinegar sprays, um, diatomaceous earth will really help again as well. Um, you can also do the slug and snail beer traps. Um, those have been known to help with earwigs as well. Um, okay. So Jennifer wanted to know how quickly do insects die after going through DE? So that's a really great question. So it really depends. Um, I mean, typically it ranges from between like, I mean, anywhere from like a few hours to days. Um, there's really no like one set answer for all of them, but I mean, it's, it is going to happen because they, they can't breathe. Um, well, it like helps, it like coats their body and makes it so they can't really breathe well. So, um, they will die. It just sometimes won't, it, it won't be immediate. It'll just be, um, a few hours to a couple days. Um, so Andrew wants to know, how do you feel about quick deteriorating pesticides? Is there a place for them? So, I mean, we've never really had to use them that much, um, Typically, we stay away from things like that because we want to make sure that we only or that we only, you know, repel the bad bugs, and we want to make sure that the good bugs are still there and working for us. Because I want to make sure that I don't harm any of those good ones, um, and I want to make sure that they do a lot of the work for me. Because if I start, if I if I accidentally kill some of the good ones, whenever I'm trying to kill the pests, then I'm going to have to take up the the job of the good ones, and I don't want to do that. So I always try and do the least intervention as possible for myself. So that's why exactly like I I go with like prevention as much as possible, um, and then I, I try anything organic first before I I move to things other things because I want to make sure that I'm not hurting any of my friends out there and that they continue to work for me. Okay. Leaf footed bugs. So this is one that's not super common, but I was seeing, I saw a couple questions pop up. Um, I, I seen a lot of questions in gardening groups over these guys and I saw um, a couple of you guys had 
these issues with the leaf-footed bugs. So I was like, well, I, I will make sure that I mention it today. And these leaf-footed bugs are um, a, a new one for me from last year. Um, I had never really battled them until last year and they were all over our tomatoes. Um, these are actually our pictures up above up here. Um, so there's two different stages that I put pictures of. There's an adult one and then the nymph version of them. So both of them are, again, very bad. But the biggest thing that you want to do if you do notice you have an issue is hand pick. And I know they look really gross and menacing, but what I did was I put on a gardening glove and I had my soapy water right here. And I was like grabbing and dropping and like throwing them in the water. Cause I was like, I was like, Oh, these guys look really like intimidating and gross. I was like, no, I don't want to touch it. But, um, yeah, just put on a garden glove, drop them, throw them into the soapy water and keep them trapped into there. Um, other things you can do, you can spray neem oil. Um, the issue that I had was this, that my battle was in the heat of the summer. So I couldn't really spray neem oil because it was like a hundred degrees out at that time. Um, and you always want to make sure that you are only spraying neem oil if it is under 90 degrees. Um, so that was not something I was able to do at that time. So hopefully you will have that option if you happen to see these guys though. Um, and then diatomaceous earth can help too. Um, and then of course, prevention is going to be key. Um, having any sort of marigolds or the stronger smelling garlic, catnip, mint, things like that. Um, and then sunflowers are actually attracting to them. So you can use them as like a trap plant to help to attract, trap these leaf footed bugs. Okay, and last but not least, I hit on peel bugs, or more commonly known as roly polies. Um, so these guys, again, are not necessarily bad, but I saw a lot of people mentioning them, that they were having issues with them. And um, I so I did want to make sure that I mentioned them. And these are about the same as the earwigs that I talked about earlier. So they're not necessarily bad, but if they are in a I mean, if you have a over infestation of them, they can turn bad because they're looking for food. Um, but primarily they're after the decomposing matter. So if you keep your garden like clean of debris and don't keep like rotting fruit or vegetables, things like that on the ground around there, they won't be attracted to that area. Um, so really pill bugs aren't going to be super bad unless you have an over infestation. Um, but you can generally fix that by keeping your area clean. And then also you can do the newspaper trick or the cardboard trick for pill bugs as well. Um, if you place that, place like a place, one of those and moisten it overnight and then come in the morning, you'll lift it up. You'll notice there's lots of peel bugs, earwigs, things like that all underneath. And you can take them away at that point if you want. Um, also using things like diatomaceous earth can help as well. Um, yeah, just to type, try to repel them from certain areas if you're having certain area issues. Okay. Um, okay. We have a great question. I have had something eat all but two of my cucumber sprouts shortly after they sprouted or maybe right before. No idea what got them. Only thing I've seen nearby are roly polies. Any thoughts? So, I mean, again, could have been the roly polies if you have like an overabundance of them. But typically, I, even then, like I say, it's probably not super, it's probably not roly polies. It could be something like the slugs and snails that are in there getting them. And typically that's like overnight. Um, so you may not have seen them, um, especially if they're smaller, smaller plants, slugs and snails do tend to like it. Um, I mean, cucumber beetles, flea beetles, things like that, um, are also things that are a possibility for there. Um, so, I mean, there's really lots of, lots of options and it's hard to know too. I know it's hard to know for you too. <laughs> But hopefully that gives you some idea of thing, different things to look for. 
Okay. Suggestions for white flies. Okay. So white flies, I typically don't have a huge issue outside. Sometimes I do in like my inside grow areas, but, um, typically like if I do notice them, I put like, I'll put some yellow sticky traps out and then, um, that'll help to catch the adult ones. Um, also encouraging beneficial insects. So things like ladybugs, lace wings, things like that can really help to battle these white flies and they will handle the issue for you. Okay. Do we want to go ahead and do a giveaway and then we'll answer any other questions afterwards if we have more? Okay. Do we have a winner selected? I will see if, uh, if they have a winner selected for us. Okay. So super exciting. We have a giveaway going. It is going to be for a one year free premium app subscription. And I am, let's see. Oh, we have a winner. It is Namorama. Congratulations, Namorama. You have won the one year free premium app subscription. So just email us at info at seedtospoon.net and we will get you all set up with your free premium app subscription for the year. And I do want to mention too, while I'm on this slide, if you guys haven't checked out the app yet and you have any other questions that I haven't gotten to, or if we run out of time, uh, make sure you click on Growbot and ask Growbot some questions because Growbot can answer pretty much anything under the sky about gardening. It's pretty great. So make sure you check out Growbot in our app. Okay. So do we have any other questions? Oh, here we go. Um, are there any plants in particular that you should avoid using DE or neem oil with? Um, so I would say any plants that are super young or, um, more delicate ones, I probably wouldn't. I'd probably wait until they're older, more established. Um, probably ones that I haven't transplanted recently. Um, those ones I, I would avoid with. And again, like I was talking about earlier with the neem oil, um, you do want to make sure that you don't spray that whenever it's too hot outside because that can suffocate your plants as well. So um, neem oil only if it's like below 90 degrees. So pretty much otherwise, like they're, they're, they're pretty useful on lots of different plants. How do you get rid of leaf miners? Okay, so leaf miners, yes, they've been bad on my tomatoes. So we have had leaf miners again in the past. If you do see them, oh, I wish I had a picture I could pop up. Um, but you'll see them, they're like these little spindly um, things on leaves. Um, you'll see their path. Um, and they are, um, you, they, you definitely want to handle them. But all you need to do is, if you show that you just remove the infected leaves and you can use like the yellow sticky traps on them as well. Um, that's been shown to help, but pretty much like I always, whenever I see that, I just take that out and put it in like the trash. Don't put it in your compost bin because that'll just keep them there, but you'll want to make sure you remove any infested leaves um, because they are super tiny. So it's really hard to spot them. So if you just take that leaf off, typically you will help. Um, and then again, I always put those uh, yellow sticky traps out because they are um, they can get stuck on those as well. Okay. So I have fairly large fire ants in the garden. Yeah, th those those pesky ants. Um, what would be your first line of treatment? Um, so the first thing that I would do um, with ants, I know we talked a lot of different ant solutions um, in the past. So if you missed it, make sure you go back because this will be posted later. So you can go back and watch the whole ant section. Um, but my number one thing that I would do, um, I would do the boiling water. Just I always try, again, the most simplest and easiest, most organic thing that I can think of first. Um, and that'll be, um, just boiling water, put water over the mound. Um, that would be the very first thing that I would try. OK. 
Okay. Do you have any other questions? Okay, awesome. Well, if anybody else has any questions, I mean, feel free to keep posting in here and I can come in here afterwards and answer, or you can always go in and ask Robot on our From Seed to Spoon app. I see we got one more question here real quick. Oh, I didn't talk about frogs. I can't believe it. I know. I barely, I barely talked about our, our best friends in the garden, I know. And frogs are definitely one. I love frogs. I love lizards. We have lots of lizards. I mean, we even have snakes. Like, there's even, like, a few little garden snakes out there. They're really small right now. But a lot of those, like, yes, they will definitely take care of lots of bugs for you. And I, anytime the kids are catching frogs outside, I'm always like, go put them in the garden. <laughs> Because I always want to both protect them because our garden's behind a fence, but it also will help to um, help to protect our our plants from the bugs. <laughs> our uh, our kids love to uh, to go out and collect the frogs. Sometimes we do have to stop them from keeping bringing them inside because we did have one night where we had two frogs in the house. Our daughter tried to sleep with one one night. I was like, what are you hiding in here? She's like, it's a frog. I was like, oh no, we got to go put this frog in the garden and it can be protected and it can go protect our plants. So she was okay with that. But my goodness, our, our kids love frogs too. I love frogs, but they are super great and beneficial for the garden. <laughs> Okay, how do caterpillars at bay? Um, so the biggest thing with caterpillars is going to be that BTK spray. Um, and that, I mean, Park Seed carries the BTK spray. It is super great. Um, and I, I, we have a bunch of different slides from previous too about the different types of caterpillars. Um, if you're having issues with like the cabbage worms or tomato hornworms, things like that, um, we have specifics on them. But BTK is the general caterpillar help right there. It'll help to um, get rid of any caterpillar issues that you have. Okay, one more for one minute. What can I do about bunnies? Okay, so I, I love bunnies, but not in the garden. Uh, so this is going to be very similar to the squirrel that I, the squirrel slide that I talked about um, previously. So you wanna do things like the motion activated sprinkler, um, preventing them from getting in there. So scaring them off, um, having any sort of fencing um, will really help too, although sometimes they can dig under, um, but also things like blood meal um, can also really help to, like if you put that around the perimeter of your garden, it can help to prevent that. Like they don't wanna go past that because they're scared of that. Um, and make them think that there's been issues there before and they don't want to go over there. Um, um, and then like things just having strong scents that repel them and don't attract them. So things like rosemary, lavender, marigolds, things like that, like on the outside of your garden can prevent them from wanting to go further in your garden because they don't really like those. So those are just some few things. Um, our app will talk a little bit more in depth too. Um, if you want to go in and check under the pest section, it'll have rabbits under there too. And you can look at, look and see all of the different things that we say about bunnies. Awesome. Um, well, thank you so much everybody for hanging out for the past hour. We are right at one o'clock now, my time at least. Um, it was really fun hanging out and talking all about pests and our friends in the garden. Um, if you guys have any other questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section and I can come back and answer them later on. Um, I will love to chat with you. Thank you all for hanging out. We do these every couple weeks. So look forward to seeing you all again here soon. <laughs> See y'all later. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.